Hi, it's nice to be with you again. This week, I'm going to quickly follow up on some surprising information that relates to last week's video, and then move to the main event. The first comprehensive fall college enrollment data is out this week, and TLDR, it's not good. Stay tuned. Follow up to last week. This week in the online publication The Hill, reporting focused on a new study that quantifies the harmful consequences of in-person classes. The study found that in cases where students moved back to near campus but were taking courses online, there was little change in the infection rates in counties where colleges were located during the period when campuses began reopening. However, cases increased where in-person classes resumed. The spikes were most pronounced in places where students moved to the college's county from parts of the country with higher infection rates. The numbers are substantial. The research indicates that resuming in-person classes correlated with nearly 1,100 more cases per day than what would have been the norm if students had stayed put in their own communities. Note that the study directly contradicts the position of Cornell University, which claimed that resuming in-person classes gave them more control over students and thus more control over transmission rates. I'll link to an article about the study in the notes below. Speaking of what's below, if you like this program, now is a good time to let me know that by hitting the like and subscribe buttons below, as well as that notification bell so you'll get notified when a new video is available. Now, on to enrollment. The National Student Clearinghouse Research Center published new data that shows undergraduate student enrollment declining 2.5% while graduate students are up 3.9% as of September 10th. As a result, post-secondary enrollment as a whole is down 1.8% compared to the same time last year. This is our first opportunity to see comprehensive enrollment data. The results are based on 3.6 million students at 629 colleges. That's nearly 22% of institutions in the United States. An undergraduate decline of 2.5% may not sound like much, but if you drill down into the data, you get a pretty dismal picture. Enrollments are down in all types of institutions at the undergraduate level. Here's a chart of the overall findings showing the percent change from the previous year. The real shocker is that dark red line, community colleges and tech colleges, which everyone, including me, thought would see an increase. Instead, Community colleges show the greatest losses, 7.5%, followed by private, nonprofit four year institutions declining 3.8%. Public four year institutions are suffering far less, with a decrease of 0.4%, although they vary by campus setting, with urban institutions increasing slightly, while rural schools fell 4%. As more data comes in, it will be interesting to drill down to specific institutions to see which types of community colleges have suffered the greatest losses. Earlier, I'd predicted that large urban community colleges in places with significant infection rates would not do well, and neither would small rural community colleges with high out-of-state athletic enrollment, because people are less willing to relocate under those circumstances. By the time the Clearinghouse publishes its next report, I expect there will be a lot more data because we are right now at about the time when most public schools produce a fall enrollment report, and so schools that have been reluctant to publicize won't have any choice. When that happens, I'll take a good look at the numbers and see if we can determine the types of community colleges that are most affected. Right now, I don't think that the data is well developed enough. For example, the report shows that community colleges suffered universally regardless of location. As you see in this chart, when broken down into rural, town, suburban, and city, we see a pretty even distribution. With only 22% of colleges reporting, and in some states, none reporting, I think we'll see a greater disparity among types of locations as more data comes in. Overall, undergraduate enrollment is below last year's level for every racial and ethnic group. American Indian and Native Alaskan students are down 8%, white students and black students decline 6% each, and both Hispanic and Asian student enrollments drop by more than 3%. As everyone predicted, international students appear to have suffered the biggest losses, 
with non-resident alien undergraduates down 11.2%. As an exception to the general declines, graduate enrollments are up, with all racial and ethnic categories seeing increases. But I don't think this is really all that surprising. Graduate school is more expensive in terms of the share paid by the student than undergraduate schools. It would stand to reason that during the pandemic, which has disproportionately affected people at the lower end of the socioeconomic scale, would produce a result where the people who are already buying the more expensive item, graduate school, are still able to afford it. In addition, it's possible that colleges, anticipating a decrease in undergraduate enrollment, have lowered their entrance standards for graduate programs to encourage enrollment in the occasionally more profitable graduate school area. An interesting development was in online programs. In May of this year, I just wasn't sure where it would go, and this is what I had to say. I think that the real mystery is what the effect will be on online colleges. On the one hand, online colleges are already structured to provide remote learning. But on the other hand, they aren't always cheap, and so that doesn't square well with the kinds of cost savings that people will be looking for in tough times. Plus, traditional colleges will have learned a great deal about how to offer online instruction as a result of their new experience. So I don't know what to predict for the online sector. At primarily online institutions, where more than 90% of students enrolled exclusively online even before the pandemic, undergraduates decreased by 3.5%, and graduate students gained by 3% for an overall decrease of 2.3%. It will be interesting to see whether this number changes as the semester progresses, but at the very least, it's clear that whatever is causing the decreases in both two-year and four-year degree-granting institutions, it's not online schools that are siphoning students, because all three sectors declined. Primarily online schools are better able to withstand enrollment decreases because they simply have fewer fixed costs created by physical infrastructure. I'll put links to all the studies that I referred to in this video in the notes below, and I encourage you to take a look at those and share your observations with me. My own belief is that the situation is going to get worse as the semester progresses. That's because although the enrollment drops reported so far are relatively modest, the financial news coming out of institutions, both large and small, shows a much more negative financial impact than these initial enrollment reports would suggest. There are bigger problems to come. There's a lot of very significant belt tightening going on around higher education, with budget cuts, furloughs, and terminations widespread. Enrollment always waxes and wanes, and when it does, it typically doesn't produce headlines like this. To deal with this shortfall, the University of Delaware is going to furlough all of its staff. That's 3,500 people. And what's causing the shortfall? Well, here's some text from the same article. This isn't an isolated incident, and these are big numbers at big schools. Colleges are behaving as if the worst lies ahead of them, not behind them we'll be able to get a much clearer sense when the Clearinghouse produces its next round of data. As always, I enjoy the opportunity to talk with you about these important issues, and I hope this information's been helpful. I look forward to talking with you again next week.